This incredibly packed harbour is on the Dutch island of Vlieland. And the reason we've come out here is because we're on the North Line 42. And we wanted to give it a proper test. So we've come out from Harlingen this morning, which is about an hour and a half strip. And with the wind picking up now, we're heading back to Harlingen. And hopefully we're gonna be able to put this boat, which Hull is based on that of a Nelson, through its paces in some proper rough weather. The theory behind North Line is to take that brilliant Nelson hull that everybody knows so well and give those on board a bit more space. So there's a bit more freeboard, more headroom because the Dutch are tall, as the, uh, the owner of the company says. And you also have this second cabin. So you have a, a midships cabin as well. This particular boat has a pair of Cummins 480 horsepower diesel engines, which gets it up to about 28 knots full whack. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's quite a serious bit of kit. When it comes to driving the 42, there aren't any huge surprises. If you know the underpinnings of the hull, you know that it's a go through pretty much anything. And we're out here today in, in what is a reasonable chop, and it feels like we're going across the garden pond, uh, and that's not a huge surprise. And neither maybe is the fact that the ride is quite wet. It doesn't take much for spray to start hitting the windscreens. But it does feel a bit dry on this boat. As I said before, it does have a bit more freeboard. It's got a fl the flared bow, and there's a, a more pronounced spray rail, and that does do, seem to do a pretty good job uh, but it's still a, a, pretty, a pretty wet ride. Um, what I found yesterday is when we sort of increased the speed a bit and we were in a slightly larger chop than this, it did tend to follow the keel a little bit, so you find yourself working quite hard at the helm, but you do know at the end of the day it is just going to smash straight through it and get you to where you want to go. Now this particular owner was very keen to have the teak laid, obviously on the deck, but also on the seats as well. No cushions, there's no table out here. So actually it feels pretty work boat. You're, you're really deep inside this cockpit. You've got this railing running all the way around and steps up onto the side deck to either side. But it does mean that it feels extremely protected if a little work boat like once you're actually standing in here. And under every locker, there's a bit of storage so you can easily fit all your bits and bobs out here. And then beneath this enormous hatch that I'm standing on now is a, is a hydraulic lifting hatch here and that is access to the engines. The engines as I mentioned are Cummins 480s and they're a really good match for the boat actually. They're incredibly smooth and with the door shut very quiet, plenty of power there and it really takes very little fuss to get this boat up and going just to 20, 25 knots where it's really in the cruising sweet spot. The helm is, is, is very, very simple, workmanlike, but it looks good as well. Everything is pretty much where you want it to be. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch to the throttles and the wheel, but to be honest, you're probably just going to set the revs and then concentrate on steering through the worst of the, ra the waves. In the saloon, there's a very traditional feel. There's lots of teak, lots of cream leather, and things like big chunky handholds here built into the table. Uh, moving forward, you have more of the traditional stuff like a proper chart table here with lots of different slots for all your different navigation bits and bobs. One ni really nice touch is this stool here, which transforms into a navigator's seat at the touch of the button. Really, really handy. And although this boat doesn't have it, you can, in the roof, have either separate opening hatches to bring more light in the ventilation, or if you want, you can have a Webasto sliding sunroof as well, which would really you know, pour light into this area and help with ventilation too. Down the companionway steps is your second living area. And I'm a big fan of this spot here. It's nice and near the galley, so the cook doesn't have to go too far with it with the food. And you can just imagine on a, a, a rainier day sitting down here with Scrabble out, it's lovely and cozy. And actually, because they've used quite large ports and you've got this hatch up here, it's not too dark either. A, a decent amount of light managed to squeeze its way down as well. The galley on the 42 is a really good size. Lots and lots of open counter space for you to use. You've got a fiddle on the edge here so stuff doesn't roll off and you can also hang on to it. And there's lots of storage too in all different forms. You've got these slots here, all with nice chunky fiddles, sliding storage here, cupboard, drawer. It's all, it's all over the place. And uh, you know it, it's clearly on a boat that you're going to spend more than a week or so on. 
There are two cabins on board the 42. Amidships, there's a twin cabin with its own little toilet compartment, and then this is the master cabin here. And you can really see here where Northland have worked hard to make as much room as possible. There is lots and lots of space above your head, and the feeling of space is really good throughout. There are only a couple of issues in here. One is that it feels a little bit sparse. Um, you know, there's a lot that you can see, the sort of blank white material here, and, and it's all a little bit cold and probably needs the touch of an owner to, to warm it up a bit. And the other issue is that there's not actually ha any hanging space in here. The cupboards either side, this small one here is just small shelving. And then on the opposite side, it's sort of the same thing again, but nowhere to actually physically hang your clothes. And the same can be said for the amidships cabin as well. We've spent three hours on board this boat today going out to Vlyland and back, and you really get a good sense of what it's about. It's a boat that will literally take you through anything. And yes, there are a few things here and there that probably need polishing off just to make it that slightly more rounded package. But in terms of a go anywhere, all round, tough as old boots boat, it doesn't get much better than the Northline 42.